Liverpool keep playing, keep winning. Every week it seems they play the worst ever, supposedly, and they keep picking up three points. Is that social media? Yeah, they're playing so bad, and you have to play bad to win, apparently. Well, you don't, but they are winning against Watford. Yeah, uh, it's a good weekend for them. Another good weekend for them because, you know, obviously City won, which the gap to them is big, but their main rivals at the moment, Leicester lost points. So, uh, so it was a big weekend for Liverpool again against a Watford side. For scrapping for the life, bottom of the table, and they've got a new manager in, so you know, sometimes they get a, a response from that. But you know, for Liverpool, they just keep churning it out, uh, Ross. Uh, bad weekend for Chelsea again, uh, they, they've, they've certainly lost form. Uh, you know, not a great performance from Leicester City, big performance from Tottenham in terms of defensively. Another uh, back to, I would say, back to normality for Man United. You know, for going through them, and I said it a couple of weeks ago, Chris Wilder has done an amazing job there. Oof. As have Wolves, who played really well, but ultimately lost. Uh, and Arsenal still hovering around down <laughs> near that mid-table. Uh, they got absolutely tanked, but it was no surprise. In fact, it was embarrassing. The punters were leaving. Uh, they might as well have left in the first half, most of them. Get home, get a bit of Sunday dinner, <laughs> or whatever it is. And uh, put something else on the telly apart from the Arsenal game, because why would you want to watch that? Uh, so Chelsea's form is a bit of a worry because there is just a little bit of separation now from the likes of a sort of a Sheffield United and the side struggling behind them, like an Arsenal. You know, those sides that are just creeping up on the top four. Four points between the Blades and the top four. Chelsea need to pick up. Well, I think we're not looking at. I think we're probably not looking at Arsenal now. They're just so wretched. Uh, I thought. I have to say, I thought at the start of the season that the front line would be enough to carry them over the line with the other weaknesses. Not not to be challenging, but to scramble maybe into the top four. That's that's just not clearly not been the case. And I think the threat to Chelsea now uh, is going to be coming from uh, possibly, probably Man United, uh, Wolves, and I think Sheffield United will fall away a little bit. I think ultimately their style of play where it's very intense. We'll catch up with them a little bit in the second half of the season. I don't think they'll get dragged. Clearly, not they're too far away from a relegation fight at the moment. But I don't think they'll be able to keep that pace up. But I think Wolves could. We've sort of discussed this as well. I think Wolves potentially could. And United should mm. be able to at least put some pressure on Chelsea. Tottenham, for sure. Tottenham are certainly back in the hunt for that top four. There's not a doubt about it. Yeah, that would be a really fascinating race with Tottenham and Chelsea going head-to-head -head yeah. for that. And Frank's, gonna be, Frank's starting to come under a little bit of pressure. Uh, Frank Lampard, you know, they didn't have a transfer window in the summer, so they couldn't operate. They have got one now in January, so they may go out and try and do some business if it's if the business is right for them, but it's not been a good couple of weeks domestically for them. Into the bottom half, how are you feeling about the sides who are still struggling down there at the bottom? I'm thinking the likes of Aston Villa, Everton and Southampton, still all around there. I mean, I know Norwich were able to take a point off Leicester, which is a great result for them. Nigel Pearson may well have an effect on Watford. They're, yeah. not, they're not too far gone yet. They're not dead yet. Yeah. It's not far. It's probably two or three games away, maybe, maybe first week in January from being so. Uh, Villa would start to concern me, uh, you know, getting dragged back, obviously they are. Southampton definitely concerned me. They seem to be avoiding the trap door almost every season and I think ultimately you can't keep selling your best players and not replenishing and replacing. And I think it potentially is a season that they could go. I think, I think Everton will be okay. I think they've got, they've got some injury problems, but I think they've got, certainly got more about them than the rest of the teams down there and they're probably going to make a big managerial decision in the next few weeks. Uh, but I think those teams, and I can't remember who was just above them. Oh, with There's West Ham are right there. Uh, West Ham, sorry, West Ham. Brighton are there, Burnley. A bit more credit in the bank for those. I think Burnley's experience of the Premier League is, is, is OK. I think they're OK. And of course, Bournemouth, who won at Chelsea. Yeah, Bournemouth had a string of, was it five straight defeats or something mm -hmm. like that, and then they go to Chelsea and win. Uh, I think West Ham will just be OK, but they're unconvincing. Uh, for sure, uh, but yeah, it's going to be, there's five or six down there uh, that I think Chef. Is Christmas a good time for those teams or a bad time? <laughs> would you look forward to it in the dressing room if you were uh, Well, there? it would depend on, on, the, on the fixture schedule because I think when you're down there, and I've had this experience, sort of both ends, uh, when you're down the bottom, you look at the fixtures and you go, bloody hell, <laughs> I've, got, I've got Liverpool, I've got City, I got four hour trip Tottenham. on Boxing Day. I got Tottenham. Where, 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 where am I playing Watford? And, and then, of course, those games, 
have their own meaning because you're playing other teams in a relegation it becomes what they call the old six pointer it never it's horrible down there never goes away um, you feel as if you're just running in the mud all the time but ultimately you got to look around when you're in a relegation fight you got to look around the dressing room and I'll tell you now, Watford's dressing room, I'll tell you who the busiest person at Watford will be in some of those other clubs right now is the physiotherapist. It's amazing that, isn't it? It's amazing when you're down there struggling. The, 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 the treatment room is a haven for a lot of players. And you've got to try and cajole those players out of there, roll the sleeves up and try and get the job done. If you can't do that, you're going down. And so I think the, the promoted clubs, uh, Norwich are struggling, Villa are struggling, Sheffield United are fine, and Southampton who perennially they seem to be struggling every year down that scenario it could be their year to go because they're not because West Ham are not a good side but even West Ham were, were able to go down there and, and take the three points off them. It's a great point on the dressing room you've got to get them out as much as anything because the mood must be awful in there everyone just blaming each other when they're not well, actually out is. there on I the had, training pitch I'd, doing anything. I had that period under at, at Derby County with Jim Smith where I went in there in, in the December 99 Jim Smith who was one of the great managers of his generation characters and he passed away this week very sadly but he was looking for people to, to go and lead and and, and uh, we were second bottom of the league in December when I signed from Celtic and we honestly it was a horrible period to the end of the year and we saved ourselves on the second last day of the season at home to Bobby Robson's Newcastle and we were at Tottenham the, day, the week before that we were away to Tottenham where we got a point and the last game of the season was Chelsea away and we couldn't afford to go to Stamford Bridge because we, we, we knew we weren't going to get in. So it was a case of just digging results out. There was games we got men sent off. I remember going to Tottenham, we lost Stefan Snow, the German defender, got sent off. At Bradford, Rory Delap got sent off in the first half. We still managed to get a point because we managed to dig in. If you can't dig in down the bottom of the league, you're screwed. Simple as that. You're not going to, Watford and these teams are not going to get out of this by silky football. They're going to, they're going to have to dig in do the horrible side of the games and hope they get enough goals to get themselves out. But I can tell you, when you play on a Saturday and you go in on a Monday and a Tuesday, it's not fun. It's fun when you're winning. It's not fun when you're trying to dig it out. But ultimately, that's what it is for these teams. They're down there for a reason. And we'll see if they can handle the pressure of trying to stay in the Premier League, which is worth gazillions, I don't know how much it's worth, to these clubs and yes. these players. But the only presents worth anything at Christmas time are points, and that's what all of those teams need, top and bottom. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.